All right, so I'm selecting and cutting out these rock candy boulders. And I can do it all by hand with a slight feather. But let's look at some of these other selection tools. So they're with the magic wand. One is called the object selection tool. And Photoshop keeps trying to make this happen. And so they keep improving it. And you kind of draw a box around something and then it will try to figure out what you're selecting. And it will keep kind of adding. And it can work pretty well. It's basically using artificial intelligence. Like I can select boulder by boulder. So if I want to delete that one, I can do that. But it doesn't always make a lot of direct sense. So I don't use the object selection tool very much unless I'm working really, really fast and don't care about how clean it is. But the one underneath it is called the quick selection tool. This one makes a little bit more sense. It just wants you to paint the things you want to select. And it will try to like find similar pixels. So in this case, did a pretty good job. I can hit Command D to deselect and I can paint this and then delete. Pretty good job. Let's get rid of this whole thing. Pretty good job. Let's get rid of all of this. So if you're using pretty well lit and differentiated exposures as your reference, this tool can help quite a bit. But now I also have to decide for me, this is the, uh, what's called the quick selection tool, right? And you can always modify it with select and mask because its default is not to have any feather. And if there's like the bottom I want to, to work on. Now here's the thing. This selected what I wanted, but it selected a little too much. So with any selection tool, if you hold down option, you can erase from that selection. So option gives you a little minus next to the tool. And then if I want to extend my tool and add a little bit more, like this little tag in here, if you hold down shift, it will add to your selection. So using Selection tools with option and shift makes you a professional selector in Photoshop. So that cut my boulders down pretty quickly and it shows me that I maybe want to move these a little bit differently in the space than I had them. So they look like boulders. And then there might be some edges that are a little hard and I'll just go in with my magic wand and then go in with select and mask and feather it 1.3 pixels. And often when you use these tools, you'll get little things like this, little artifacts, like the quick selection tool. You see that little row of pink pixels? You know, there's little anti-alias kind of ghosts left. And I don't want that. I want all the empty space. So I'm going to turn off contiguous. So that it shows me all that little debris that was left. And then if I use selected mask and feather, then all of it will get deleted. So the next time I try to select it, there might be like tiny little pixels, but most of it's going to be nice and clean. And where it's not, I can use my regular lasso. And taper it, create my own edge, my own feathering. Again, try not to be too perfectionist about it. unless you're getting paid large sums of money. We want this to be a creativity enhancing tool, 
not a migraine-inducing tool. All right, the next layer, I have this cotton candy. This is a really good example of where the quick selection tool can help. I'm just going to kind of paint roughly this top portion and then just hit delete, then deselect, then magic wand, select the empty space, and then feather it with select and mask to cut it down. And now let's kind of stretch it, move it, make it work. Whereas each layer I'm adding into my composition, I want it to feel like it can work as a landscape really at any time now. And just the more I add, the better it will be in terms of establishing depth. But I can use that cotton candy to really mask a lot of the faults. I might even decide to put it behind the boulders, right? And then transition into the next element, which is some of these waffles. So for this, I'm gonna just use my lasso directly and pick an edge and then just delete it out. I need to be on the right layer. because we have that really strong focus pool. So I have to create hard edges. So a challenge with using food photography. But I know I have good stuff underneath shining through. So I don't need to be too concerned about losing content that I like. And here where it gets really, really soft, I'm hoping I'll have my other waffle overlap with it. There it is. So my other waffle. Let's try the quick selection tool, get that background out of there. Select a little too much, use option to subtract, kind of paint the area you want, and it's going to automatically detect edges. Sometimes it does better than others. Just make sure you don't have anything you don't want selected before you delete. And then I'm going to use my magic wand with contiguous turned off so I get all the empty space and then select and mask and feather it and then delete, delete, delete to soften that edge. And then here, how do I find how to merge these two? This is where I'm going to take my opacity down a little bit and then I use my lasso and I pick the edge. But this is maybe my favorite thing in compositing, digital compositing. Once you have an edge that's kind of organic and not hard edged, like you've found your edge. Let's make that a little bit more organic, a little bit softer, a little bit more natural. Now I can cross dissolve one into the other. So we haven't used the eraser tool yet. And an eraser tool is a way you can kind of get in there and basically control the opacity of just the edge. Right. So how to make this meld into the waffle behind? I'm going to use the eraser. I'm going to set the eraser to be fairly large, like maybe around 200 pixels, because that's not all that large. It's about the size of a pencil eraser at this resolution. And I want its opacity to be 100%. 
but I want its hardness to be 0%. And then instead of erasing right into it like that, you can see the nice soft edge it gives me. I'm going to start by just hovering around the edge and letting the, the kind of feathering from the soft edge of the eraser start blending the two together. So you can choose soft round or you can choose hard round because under the size options, you can always set your own hardness. And I would, if I was using my tablet, I would use soft round pressure at a 0% hardness around 200 pixels. So you can really control both the size with the pressure and how soft it is. But that starts transitioning it. So that when you get to areas like this that are kind of vague, as long as you're at 100% and you get rid of any of those hard edges first, then you can go in at lower opacities, like maybe around 50%, and I can start transitioning between one and the other like between the cherries and the raspberries. So when you click on any tool, you'll get the options at the top. And the options for the eraser are just like for a brush. So the one we want, it'll show you the tool you're using, leave that as the eraser, but you want the size and the hardness. And I'm showing you, and you want the opacity. So you start with a 100% opacity, a large, very soft edged eraser. And especially like if I'm blending forest into forest or clouds into sky, like that's how you get rid of your hard edges. And then you can go in with lower opacity and start kind of blending the two together so that you're not clear where one starts and the other one ends. And I always erase from the top layer, right? And let the bottom layer kind of be revealed with what I'm erasing. Okay, so far so good. So now these waffles are kind of seamed together. And I've got cotton candy that I don't really need kind of filling it in, in the background. And I've got rocks that aren't really showing up that much. Maybe let's move the cotton candy up a little. See if we can make that a more useful element. And if I want more of that cotton candy, I can internally composite it. Maybe I warp it up. Remember, we only need five elements, but you often end up with more. And then I'm going to duplicate it, Command-J. So now I have another cotton candy element, and I can transform it. I can flip it horizontally. There we go. And I can kind of use it to help my composition over here. Like Maybe it overtakes the mountains, so it looks like the mountains are coming from this cotton candy mist. So I've got background, and now I've got middle ground. And what have I not adjusted? I haven't adjusted the levels, the adjustments for these yet. Because I'm pretty happy with them. But they can always be goosed a little bit. So let's start with where I want these boulders. I can even duplicate it and use different parts of the boulders in different backgrounds, like behind the waffles there on top of the cotton candy. And then just cut away from where they duplicate. Uh, but that's too copy pasty, right? That and that. So let me try another use of it. So just like a lot of collage experimentation, you can figure out what works for you. Maybe I cut away 
a little bit more from this.